There are many great examples of Midnight Monster Cult classics, and Cellar Dweller is one that should be added to any horror fanatic's list. Right when I placed the DVD in my player and saw Jeffrey Combs on screen drawing some comic book frames, I already knew that this was going to be an enchanted ride full of dark magic, attractive women, and a decent helping of gore on the side. The makeup, costumes, and special effects are amazing as well, and sucks the viewer right in. Now the print I have on DVD is pretty dark in some spots and makes me wonder if Scream Factory just used a transfer from an old beat up VHS copy of the film they had just lying around. And I am also aware that this has been put onto Blu-ray, so hopefully the transfer for that print is cleaner and brighter so you can see everything the way it was meant to be seen. Basically, Jeffrey Combs plays the famous comic book cartoonist Colin Childress, who ends up burning up his home and his studio in an attempt to kill off the cellar dweller whenever he used the book of magic he had to make it seem more real and authentic. <laughs> Some odd years later the property is transformed into a very strange art institute and the cellar where he did his work is closed off because it's quote unquote haunted by Childress' spirit. That's where Whitney comes in. And that's where you the viewer come in. Man, Jeffrey Combs is everywhere. Being a comic book artist would be an awesome career. Heavy is the axe we wield against the foe of daily life. Concierges always creep up on you. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I frighten you? Yes, you scared me half to death. Uh Dark art is still art. Art is still dark. Eh, she doesn't get it. Childress. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the first few sketches are just copies of Childress's work. I was just really learning how to draw, and the rest, of course, are my own. Mm. Mrs. Briggs, I want to create a whole new comic book in the tradition of Cellar Dweller. And, well, what better place to be inspired than here in the house that Colin Childress lived and worked in? Mm. And went crazy and then killed himself in. Let's not forget that. Miss Taylor, all of this is very spine-tingling. But what does it have to do with art? Angst? 
Yeah, it looks like you took some watercolors and just slopped them on a piece of printer paper. Yep. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What do you think? It's it's very nice. That's that's a cow in there. Huh? It's, it's very nice. It's angst. Sorry. What the hell kind of art institute is this? The excess of flamboyance of the coloration of your painting detracts from the power of the narrative and the true glory of the painting. Can you repeat that in English? It's elegant, powerful, and deceptively simple. It has this amazing otherness. <laughs> All right, give me the paintings of the broad gets it. I'm flattered. Do you really think you're that valuable? <laughs> what on earth are you doing? Cannon, lady! I hand them over. I really mean business. Jesus, Philip, give him the paintings! No. No, he's bluffing. Don't count on it, lady. You're not going to shoot her. You want to take that chance? That... That gun you're so proud of is a 357 Magnum. <laughs> Give the lady a cigar. So what? So? The cylinder holds six bullets. You just fired one. The rest of the cells are empty. That gun isn't even loaded. You are very observant. Very. I want to thank you all very much. I can continue with my scene now. You've been very, very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Norman, you fool! I have more fun drinking than screaming at the wind. Sorry, did I wake you? Well, it's a great way to try and cleanse out all the tension in my body. I guess the others are just used to it, and I'll have to be a little bit more quiet for you. <laughs> Never seen a mop wetter. I'll hang you up by your eyelids and wrench out your fingernails one by one. Damn, that's some brutal shit. I don't know what you're up to, Amanda, but if I, if I ever catch you down here again, I will hang you up by your eyelids and wrench out your fingernails one by one. You got it? Yeah, I do. I'm really scared. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of Amanda's arm. <laughs> Cellar Dweller is for sure a great entry into the horror genre from the late 80s. It's a tad lighter on the gore side of things, there is still some, just not as much as you would expect. And probably one of the best scenes in here is when the Cellar Dweller just outright smacks one of the Art Institute students' heads right off. Great fun. There's the annoying Philip played by Brian Robbins, who somehow becomes the love interest of Whitney by the end. Why do the annoying ugly guys always get the hot chicks? And the arch enemy of Amanda. Her and Whitney have a past, and there's a subplot of her and the woman that runs the Art Institute, which are trying to ruin her reputation by way of making a fake tape of her plagiarizing Amanda's work, even though she's not a comic book artist.
Once this boiled head stew finally simmers down, you get a pretty fantastic 80s monster flick that warrants the cult following that it has garnered. There's always a cellar to be a dweller in, and instead of killing people, I'm just going down to get some wine. Bring the cheese and crackers. This party is going to be out of control.